Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, and thank you, SLMA, for giving me this uh, great opportunity to participate in the conference. Uh, well, I'm Dakshila Basanayaka from University of Peradeniya. I conducted my research study under the topic of substandard dietary practices in patients undergoing continuous ambulatory peritoneal dialysis. Uh, let's uh, straight into the uh, introduction. Continuous ambulatory peritoneal dialysis, or CAPD, is a, a treatment modality for end-stage renal disease patients. So as these patients' kidneys are no longer working the way they are supposed to work, they have to adhere with some dietary recommendations, and also they have to stick with proper dietary practices in long-term basis. So this study was aimed to assess impact of dietary practices in adhering to dietary recommendations. This was a descriptive cross-sectional study conducted on uh, 102 randomly selected CAPD patients at National Hospital Candy. Uh, let's move on to the results and discussion section. So as this table clearly shows, very few number of participants have adhered uh, with SPN recommended targets for all the selected nutrient components. And median dietary uh, protein intake was really low and it was an important finding which required prompt attention. When considering daily consumption of uh, consumption percentages in this figure, as you can see now, um, percentages of participants consumed protein-rich food sources such as chicken, other meats, uh, egg white, and fish were also uh, relatively low. So this lower consumption of high quality uh, protein foods may lead to lower dietary adherence in this population. So normally, CAPD patients are encouraged to have a low potassium on phosphorus diet, but it seems like these patients have overly, overly restrict uh, food sources containing potassium and phosphorus because number of participants with the recommended targets uh, for potassium and phosphorus uh, are really low. So uh, these patients' daily fruit consumption was also unsatisfactory, as you can see in this figure. Uh, their uh, daily fruit consumption was as lower as 14.7%. Although their vegetable consumption was relatively high, uh, most of the participants, that means more than 30% of the participants, used to boil vegetables before uh, they cook, and more than 50% uh, of the participants uh, used uh, low, pot low potassium vegetables intentionally or unintentionally uh, as a measure to lower potassium in their diet because uh, from clinic they are getting the advice to lower potassium uh, content in their diet. So these blind restrictions have led to uh, potassium and uh, fiber non-adherence in this population. Uh, finally, uh, out of selected components, most adhered component was sodium, but it is also as lower as 26.5%. So practices like stern uh, salt restrictions and uh, consumption of salt alternatives may be uh, contribute to sodium non-adherence in this population. Therefore, results of this study conclude that majority of the participants' dietary consumption and adherence was lower uh, than target recommendations. So uh, we suggest uh, to introduce proper nutritional uh, education models uh, to understand the principles of nutritional requirements uh, for this population other than uh, blindly restrict important food uh, items for their body. Thank you very much.